Hello and welcome to a new episode of Convert on Shopify. My name is Pancho Mendiola. And today I had a great conversation with Kat Garcia from Email Science. So you will probably tell in the episode that we are both email marketing fans. I have been doing or focusing on email marketing for quite a while, for some, some years now, and I love it. I think this is a channel that is highly underrated. Kat can can also tell you about her numbers. And, and actually, when she told me her numbers, I was like, yeah, yeah, I have, I have those. I have those as well. So I, I think that's a trend. We, we can we can test that that's a trend. And I know a lot of a, a lot of other stores, friends, peers, or even stores that I manage that have uh, roughly the same numbers, like in a percentage of revenue. So yeah, email marketing for us is a huge deal. And in this one, we we spoke about why it's also very important for conversion, not not only as to consider it as a channel but how to improve conversion using email marketing. So uh, this was an awesome, awesome conversation. I hope you enjoy it as well as I did. So let's jump right in. Hey, Kat. Uh, so thanks. Thanks again for your time. I really appreciate it. And I hope we can have an awesome conversation. So the first thing I want to ask you is the importance of email marketing in conversion. I know that email marketing, sometimes it's regarded like, I don't know, like as an old kind of channel and tactics. I, I love it. You know, I am a huge advocate as well of email marketing. But can you tell us a little bit uh, about why do you think it's really important for conversion? Cool. Well, thanks for having me, Pancho. Super excited. Yeah. Um, well, email, I'm a little bit biased, right? <laughs> I'm an email marketer. But I think a lot of people don't like email because they've had a negative experience with it. But I've always... but I guess that's why right now with what I do, I try to make it a, a delightful experience, as they say, right? As relevant and as delightful as possible. Um, marketing is pretty, it's, you know, like from experience, it's very specifically to e-commerce, right? Um, marketing is, is very important because at least for my clients and what we've seen industry-wide, it can pull in 30, 40, or sometimes 50% come sales season of your revenue. So imagine if you didn't have email, you're losing out on all that money, um, conversion wise. And you know, not everybody who goes to your website are ready to buy anyway, right? Um, but just to add some context here, because I know some people who don't do email, but like, no, you know, not email is, is overrated. I want to say first that email can do everything on its own, right? And it's, it, you could have the most perfect email program, automation, design, copy, you could have the most beautiful email, everything. But if no, if there's no traffic going to your website, email can do anything because you do need a list and people need to go to your website to sign up for your list. So email is just part of a bigger marketing mix really in your program. But a good thing about it is that if you have great content, great social, um, you have traffic coming in, email can then go ahead and support those channels type of thing. So it's very important. Email is there um, done right, especially automations, behavior-based triggers. Um, done right, you can nurture and you can meet your customers at the right place at the right time. So yes, so email is very important, especially Black Friday. I know it's too, some people might say it's too early, but Black Friday season, email is your best bet into reaching a lot of people. Email and SMS, I would say. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah. And I think you mentioned something really important, which is uh, nurturing, uh, which for mm. me is a, is a big part of, of conversion, right? So uh, I think we uh, normally, we, we tend to think as, uh, you know, optimization, in just what happens right at your site. But there's a lot mm. of other moments when the customer is not at our site uh, that they are either in their in their inbox or they are maybe in YouTube or in social media and and with uh, what I like about email is that it's like I think it's the last the last uh, super private space where you can actually uh, decide uh, what you want in your inbox and, and what not because in you know, in, in social media, you can unfollow people, but you, you, you still get ads, you still get advertised. And email, I think it's like the, the, the last standing, you know, really private place. And, and, and I think you can be, uh, you can have like intimate 
um, relationship with with your customers or potential customers, uh, and 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 that's that's why I think it's it's huge uh, for for conversion as well. Um, yeah. All right. Also, I agree with your numbers. Like uh, in my in my stores, uh, we are yeah. we, we are heavy in, in email marketing, and and we we sometimes get between thirty and forty percent with uh, yeah of our of our revenue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's 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 big. It's it's like imagine like not doing email and just losing out on all those people, right? Yes. And yes. And you and you paid for these people anyway. You they before they get to your list. You would have spent money on content. You would have spent money on ads. Like you spent money on them. Might as well try to capture as many of them as possible. A pop up, a thing or two. Ask for their email. So, yeah, it's, it's big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and especially for also you, you said nurturing, but also retention, right? So yes. once once you make the sale and and you can do all these behavioral triggers, like if they purchased product A, then you can keep telling them about that product uh, for for like how to use it and how do they like it and all this stuff so yeah for retention it's it's huge as well it, retention is king is i mean especially for black friday i mean a lot of people yes. think i mean not a lot of people but most people think right black friday you're making a killing but you know you're giving a lot of discounts and black friday is not really a time to make a lot of profit it's more of acquisition and it's the retention that's going to make you money you know a few weeks a few months after black friday or any sale really so um and it's you know we all know as marketers it's much cheaper to make past customers buy from you again as opposed to having a new one buy from you so email plays a good part and um sms too so email and sms together it's a killer combo for conversion and you know retention acquisition yeah Yeah, I think the number yeah. is around 75% cheaper to to sell again yes. to an existing customer than to acquire a new one. <laughs> yeah. Your best customer is your existing customer, right? Yeah, that's right. So, okay, now that we have established that email marketing is a big deal uh, for, mm. for e-commerce and, and conversion, what where should we start focusing on? Like, what's the first step that we need to to take care of? Cool. Uh, there's a lot to think about, right? For email, there's so you think about your copy, your strategy, your design. But one of the things, at least once you have those things, you have, you know, you just go from the basic set of emails. One of the first things you really need to think about is deliverability. Um, you know, it's it's one, you know, like I said earlier, you can have the most perfect program and you can even have a lot of people going to your website signing up. But if those emails are not making it into the inbox, it's just going to spam. Uh, you have bigger problems than having the perfect email. So deliverability is one of those things that's being overlooked, but especially when you have high volume, high volume list, if you have a lot of people coming to your site, this is something that you need to watch closely. Right, right. And mm -hmm. uh, so deli deliverability. And what, mm -hmm. what are some actions that, that we can take to, to manage it or, or to actually have a good deliverability? Yeah, I mean, specific to e-commerce, right? Everybody says go to the primary inbox, but you know what? The promotions tab is not a bad place to be in because that's where it's, that's where you belong. You're sending out as a key e-commerce company, you're sending out promotional items, right? Uh, it's a good place to be in. You don't want to be in the spam box. So if you make it to the promotions tab, you're good. Now, the reason why um, deliverability, especially specifically, you want to make it to the primary inbox because at any given time, like in the promotions tab, you are, there's like, like I'm on, on a MacBook right now. And if I go on Chrome and look, you know, look at my promotions tab on Gmail, there's like about 15 items on there, three on top, if I remember three ads, and then 12 at the bottom of the regular ones. So at any given time, you have 14 other competition in there to click, right? So if you're in the primary tab, that's what people click on all the time. You will, people will see it. So you have Um, less competition there. So just making a case for why this matters. And if you do make it to the primary tab, uh, one of the things that you can do is engage with your customers, right? So when you send out your nurturing, right, your welcome flow, your welcome sequence, one of the things that you can do is encourage them to whitelist your email. But 
you know, I don't know, I don't know about you, Pancho, but when someone tells you, add me to your contact list, how many times have you done that? Do you do it uh, or? No, honestly, I, I don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do it either. Right? Like you, you just, I don't think anybody does that. So you, you send out a welcome email. I just signed up. I'm like, what are you asking me to do? So, you know, you could suggest that, but that's not at the top of the list. If you're using Gmail, there's a little star on the top, right? You can ask people to do that. It's pretty quick. Hey, in the top right, click on star so you don't miss out. But one of the easiest ways, and I think Ham has a bigger return, is engaging with your customers. So it went on your welcome sequence at some point, you can ask them, you know, reply to this email. You know, that doesn't even have to be the first one. You know, on your sequence, if you have the story of the founder, story of the company, specifically if it's the CEO, encourage people to reply. Um, that's one of the easiest and best ways to do it. Engage with your people, ask people to reply. And the more people reply, and of course you reply back, um, that will send a signal to email platforms that, hey, this email is legit. They're sent, people are you know engaging with it. They're doing, you know, they're replying just the way email should be. Um, that's one thing. And I know there are some brands and I'm working with a brand right now. And what they do is they, every season, they have a new collection, Scoozies. And whenever they would have like this new launch, they would ask people reply to this email. It's like a giveaway and guess what designs are in it. So for example, for summer, they would ask, uh, you know, what designs do you think will be on the koozies? Is it going to be sunshine or swimsuits or umbrellas, right? So people would reply. It's a fairly, you know, easy way to do things. And they get a lot of replies. They get a lot of engagement. Um, not only are their clients engaged with them, Again, the platforms are seeing that there's a lot of replies going on and it's not spammy and you have, they have a bigger incentive in putting you in the primary bo in tab than the promotions and definitely away from the spam box. So, all right. A couple and of things there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, uh, th those are great <laughs> tips. So, and those, those emails that we want people to reply, uh, do you recommend that they are uh, like only, only text, like as if I, uh, like as a human is writing it uh, and, and expecting a reply? Well, it, it depends on the email, right? Because like for, for e-commerce, people kind of expect that it's like all big and colorful, right? So as much as possible, they'll try to put some plain text on there. And depending on your brand, on your voice, you can encourage people, you know, in one brand, you can say, just hit reply. Another brand, they can say, please respond. So depending on the brand, depending on the recipients, you can word it differently. But um, essentially, just try to incorporate as many plain text elements as you can. I mean, I, you know, two ways you can do it. One is like hand code it, right? But that's expensive and takes time. Yeah. And on the other hand, though, just like on, even on like a heavy graphic um, email, like a lot of illustrations, just add one or two elements there that's plain text. That should be enough, especially for e-commerce. All right. All right. So uh, now that you... Now that you gave us some tips on how to be in the primary tab or, or, or even just make it to the inbox, what are some don'ts? Like what do you, you, you don't want to do to get to the spam folder? Uh, uh, like uh, you have some tips for that? Yeah. Well, don't buy lists. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> uh, it just, I have had so many people say, Kat, you know, I'm, you know, I just signed up for Clavio. My friend, you know, he had a business, he gave me his list. I'm like, no, yes, <laughs> just like, yes, don't yes, do yes. it, All right? Um, depending on your business, if you can do double opt-in, I know it's not practical for, for e-commerce, but if it's something, depending on your audience, if it's something that you can do, um, exp um, you know, test that, experiment, if that's something that's doable for you, uh, don't just send, you know, avoid spammy subject lines, you know, you know, you know how that goes. And don't just send an email where there's just like this one big image and you just send it out. And there's no, there's no live plain text on it. Or at the very least, add an out text to your emails, right? Um, that kind of thing. And just don't blast your list every day and watch your image. I'm just like running through in my head now. So one thing to do, especially if you have a larger list, segment your list. Don't just blast your list every day and, you know, that doesn't, that's not going to work, especially if your metrics are not that low. If your open rates and your click rates are low to begin with, blasting the same people again and again is not going to help. Focus on sending emails to an engaged list and then slowly grow from there. Um, practice good list hygiene, list management, 
right? Watch your um, deliverability metrics, right? How many bounced emails, you know, unsubscribes, spam complaints. You, you need to watch it in your metrics. Um, it's particularly for spam complaints, as we're talking about deliverability. If you look on, in, in Clavio, at least you go on analytics benchmarks. There's, you can see your spam complaint number there. It's good to have a little number. If it's zero, if, I mean, if it's a high number, that's not good, right? It's gonna be like people are, are mad at you. On the other end of the spectrum, if it's zero, like pick and spans, no spam complaints, that can be one of two things. One, you have a perfect email program. Two, you people are not seeing your email, you're already in the spam box. So no one's complaining. So that's something to watch. So just to wrap up again, um, segment carefully, watch your metrics, right? And um, practice, do best practice when sending out an email, right? Don't just, you know, send out plain text, add plain text elements in your email. And if you can add out text as well, when you add images to your email. So. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. The good yeah. thing that Clavio helps a lot with one of those tips that you gave us, right? For example, with the hygiene, so Clavio will suppress users and, and uh, if, yeah. if they're not opening your email. So, uh, and, and yeah, the segmentation, I think it's a, it's a huge, huge deal as well. I think we are now, we have to go a little bit away from, from the regular uh, way of doing email, which is, it was before, you know, like newsletters, to everyone and and maybe they're not interested so having different lists even so there's people for example there's brands that i i do like to get some content of them like articles and news and stuff like that but there's other brands that i just want to get promotions and that's it you know you, you don't have to sell it to me i i'm already a client uh, I, I already love what you do so just send me promotions and if you can keep those uh, two, uh, like least separate uh, and, and there's ways to do it. Like, or for example, identifying, uh, people that only use coupons and, and, yeah. uh, and then, so don't send emails without coupons to the people that never buy without a coupon. And so there's Agreed. some, so, yeah, there's a bunch of, of practices that, that, I mean, we, uh, email marketing has gone a lot, a long way. I, I, I can just, I, I think you do it as well. You can just like dive into the metrics because uh, that, that's all, also a way to get your know your customers. So with social media, it's really hard to get to know your clients, right? Yeah, no, it, we can sometimes get over-optimized crazy there, right? Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm with you on that. Keep that list, you know, keep that list clean. You know, see, when people are not opening, let them go, suppress them, right? They're costing you money. They're costing you metrics. They're costing you your reputation. It's just not worth it. So, you know, if they don't want to open your emails, then be, um, if they want, they'll come back. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you so. can, you can do maybe some strategies to having, having them re-engage, but not, not in the same way that you're doing it with the people that are already engaged. Right. Yeah. If, if they don't want you, then you don't just keep them emailing. It's like, it, <laughs> like person to person if they're avoiding you don't just keep on going yeah. to them like, yeah if someone <laughs> keeps leaving you in scene that means something right <laughs> Ex <laughs> exactly some take a hint <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly all yeah. right uh all right so i i think these are some awesome awesome suggestions and i know that you are already starting to work in in your black friday and cyber monday campaigns so, I, and I know it's soon yet, but would you be willing to share in another episode a little bit of what you are doing and, or, I mean, not the details, but just like in a general, general idea of what a proper run email marketing campaign for, for Black Friday looks like? <laughs> yeah, I would love to. Just let me know, Pancho, you know, I'll be there. So, awesome. I would love to. <laughs> all right Kat well thank you thank you very much for your time I really enjoy this I, I I love talking email marketing so I hope that we uh we can have you very soon you know but thanks Pancho much appreciated <laughs> have a good one thank you well there you have it an awesome awesome conversation with Kat Garcia from emailscience.com I hope that you wrote down all these amazing amazing tips and uh, well, I, I, as you heard, hopefully we'll have her in the near future so she can talk 
a little bit about her strategies for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, which are always obviously huge, but also a bit hectic, and especially if you don't prepare in time. So that's why we we hopefully have her in this month in September. <laughs> so we have some time to uh, to implement that those strategies. So also remember that in convert.com, we have a lot, a lot, a uh, huge knowledge base about conversion rate optimization, A-B testing, and all around uh, e-commerce stuff. So go to convert.com and you'll find articles, blogs, webinars, courses, etc. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.